Hey everyone. All right. Well, today is Tuesday, um, August 27th, and our homework this evening is on 1.3 place value of decimals. Remember to write your full name first and last, and then your teacher, homeroom teacher's name. In case you misplace your homework, it will go back to your homeroom teacher and easily found. We are doing even numbers this evening, and so if you're wanting to do all of them, that is up to you, but I want to focus on just the even. We're going to rename two tenths using other place values. So let's take a look. Looking at the blue, it's reading two tenths. The way we write it out is two tenths, and then another way of showing it is two times the one tenth. Well, that will give me that equals to two tenths. Does that make sense? Well, now let's move over here. We're looking at, look at the blue. In that blue, we're going to say that it's 20 what? Because this is going to be in what place value this blue is in. Right, exactly. So it's going to be 20 hundredths. And if you are not sure, right up here, the place value where you have your whole number, your decimal point, here you have tenths, hundredths, thousandths, and then you also know the way it is written out. It could be, you can write it out with zero, decimal point zero zero one, you can write it out decimal point zero one, decimal point one, just one. I got carried away with the zero. Sorry about that. Or you can write them out as fractions. So you're going to have one over 1,000, one over 100, one over 10. So you have one tenth, one hundredth, one thousand, and they're written two different ways there. And then we have it just the abbreviation so I didn't have to write out the words. So we know that 20 hundredths is the same as 20 times which place value is this in? The hundreds. So I'm going to write that as a fraction because I know that the one hundredth is going to be 1 over 100. So I want you to think about that as you're saying it, and then we'll be practicing some more to see if you understand that. Let's look at this one right here. This one here, we have all three digits highlighted. Okay? So if we have them all, we're using all three digits. What is the place value that the last, I'm sorry, place value that the last digit is in? You're right, it's in the thousands. So now I'm going to say this whole number is being 200. That's right, thousands. Very good. Go ahead and write that down. Now, if we wanted to do an equation to show that represents the place value, I'm going to take my number here, so it's 200, and what do you think I'm going to multiply it by? That's right, so if you look at here, this is thousandths, so I'm going to multiply it by one thousandth, one over one thousand. So if you notice the pattern, if I had two tenths, my two tenths is the same as two times one tenth. I had twenty hundredths, which is the same as, so here's my hundredths, twenty times one hundredths. I heard some ahas, so very good. So we're going to keep working on this. All right, let's move over to number four. We're going to write the number in two other forms. So we this is in standard form, which we have learned already. So another form could be, and today I think it was one of the students that mentioned in my class, that we can do it in written form. So I'm going to have 4 and, I'm going to say this whole number, 200. Ninety three, and then what place value will that be in? What place value is that three in? 
So if I'm looking up on my place value chart, it's in the thousands. So it's 293 thousands. So that's one way. Can I do that? I scoot it over. There we go. Can I, um, what's another way? Can I do it in, today we did expanded notation. Can I do it in expanded notation? I sure can. And what about, can I do it in expanded form as well? Yep. So I'm going to do mine in expanded form. But these, that's just, those are two other ways that you can do it. So you do it in two different ways. So if you want to, you choose the one you want. This is going to be, this is written. I'm going to write this down. So if you're not sure, you can remember. And then I'm going to do, expanded form. So I'm going to take my first number and it's four plus my two is in the tenths place. So I'm going to write it for zero holes and two tenths plus I have zero holes because I'm spreading that out and I have nine hundredths and my last one is three thousandths and there you go that's another one if you're choosing to do expanded notation remember that on Spanish expanded notation which we did today can also be written in two decimals as well as fractions So look at the different ways that you can express this number. You can do that number. And also, there was another one we didn't quite get into, but it was the number line. All right, let's look at number six. Emil says that the snow on the ground is five times one hundredth meter high. How can this number be expressed as a decimal? Five times one hundredth. Let's look at what we did over here. So I have five at a hundred. So we have five one hundredths. Remember our um, units, right? So I'm going to. I was going to go get the twos, but I don't think I'll have time. So remember that we, today we said that this represents one hundred. That's the unit, right? How many fives do I have? I mean, how many units? How many fives? How many? Um, fives do I have because each one is valued at one hundredth so that's one two three four five so if I put all these units together what is the value of these units that's right because this is one hundred two hundred three hundred four hundred that's a five hundredth so how do I write five hundredths as a decimal you go ahead and do that, and I'm going to write it down. I'm going to write it down as, did you write what I wrote? Yay! If you didn't get what I wrote, what happened? So come into the class tomorrow and let me know what happened to it, or message me, and not message, sorry, let me use the right terminology. Um, leave me a comment so that I can see your thinking, or I can. you can let me know what happened. All right, everybody good on this one? Excellent. I'm going to tear this part out here because I had left it in the book. I'm going to flip it over and even so it's going to be everything on this side. 8, 10, and 12. Let's look at number 8. Which number has the same value as 7 times 1,000? All right. Remember, I'm going to have my chips because chip represents thousands. And how many of them am I going to have? That's right. 7. So it's 1, 2, 3, four, five, six, that's seven thousandths. So which one of these represents seven thousandths? You're absolutely right. It's B. B represents seven thousandths. This is seven tenths, won't work. This is seven hundredths, won't work. And this one is seven holes, which we definitely don't have that. All right, very good. If this is one that you were having trouble, leave me a message on here that letting me know what happened or that you had difficulties with that. 
Let's look at number 10. Which number has the same value? And we're looking at same value up here. Please underline same value as well because we're looking at an equation, what's going to balance. So of 3 times 1 tenth, well, 1 tenth, what are we using to represent our tenths? You're right, we're using the rods. So I'm going to have 3 of the 1 tenth. Because 3 of 1 tenth is 1 tenth, 2 tenths, 3 tenths. So which one of these, I'm going to put this here. So it represents 3 tenths. So which is the one that's going to work out? Can you see it? Very good. The answer is C. Up here, I'm going to do the same thing, so get into the habit, because we're balancing the equation anyway. And this was going, this answer here is 7 thousandths, and we're there. All right, now let's look at number 12, and then you are done. The homework was very fast this evening. Multi-step problem. Up. Oh. Leon measured the distance each of his four toy cars rolled across the floor. Okay, well, that's not too bad. You guys have done that, where you're racing on different cars to see which one went fastest. Which car measurement that has four in the thousandths place represents the shortest distance rolled? Okay, remember that the shortest distance rolled. So before I answer it, I'm sure you've already found the answer, but before you answer it, we talked about putting on our science labs and dissecting our equation. So here we had each of those four toy cars rolled across the floor. Which car measurement has four? So I'm going to circle the number four. And I'm going to underline thousandths place. And it represents the shortest distance rolled. So which one of these has four in the thousands? Does this have four in the thousands? Nope, putting an X there. Does this have four in the thousands? Yes, it does. I'm going to put in a line under there. And so then I'm going to put a question mark. Does this have four in the thousands? Yes, it does. Ah, but it's saying for the shortest, which means shortest has to have the least amount. So I'm going to put a question mark here. Well, does this have four in the thousands? No. Process of elimination is one of the strategies. So now let's look at this one. Which one is going to be the shortest, the least, or the smallest amount? So we're going to, the zeros are the same, so those are equal. I'm going to write an equal sign right below that. 7 is greater than 2, so I'm going to put 7 is greater than 2, which means that, which is the right answer then? C, very good, because this is the smallest number. Excellent. Was anything, so, was anything difficult with that? Now, if you're wanting to, you can go ahead and answer number 7. 9 and 11, and then we can go over that tomorrow. Sounds great? All right, you guys have a great evening, and if you're wanting to as well, get some more practice on number 1, number 3, and number 5. So if you're wanting to do the whole thing, I'll go over, I'll put the answers up on the board tomorrow, and you can check your work. Have a great evening, and I will see you then. Bye.